asked me about uh, what I think about bluegrass timing and what I tell them is that any music is good with the right timing and it's all about how you manipulate the metronome when you practice it and the metronome is so important to practice to if you don't play with a metronome or practice to one you should start now because it's one of the best things you can do for your playing it's like athletic training um, and what I like to do is take one tiny little phrase that I'm working on. And um, this is the bluegrass phrase that I start a lot of students with. So it's just a slide from the second to the fifth and it's a forward roll on the odd numbered strings, the fifth, the third, and the first. So I will turn on the metronome on a nice medium setting where they all start at like 120 BPM. And I will try to play metronomically in sync as I can possibly be with the metronome to start out with. Like so. Now, one of the things I really like to do is to try to play, practice with the metronome in manipulating the metronome. And I know you say, wow, that, how do you manipulate a, man a metronome? It's, it's a static thing. Well, you're the human, so you can play around it. You can play on top of the beat like I just was. You can play in front of the beat or you can play behind it. And one of the predominant listening factors in most enjoyable music across genres is the ability to do this the ability to elicit emotion or elicit rhythm by playing either ahead or behind the metronome bluegrass kind of has a push pull and that becomes more uh, apparent in your intuition when you play more of it but to start out i like to show people the three different modes of playing with the metronome the number one being play playing on top of the beat Number two, playing a little behind the beat. And number three, exaggerating playing behind the beat. So you can dial these in on slower or faster tunes in order to get the bluegrass lilt that a lot of people talk about. So I'm going to demonstrate that right now. I'm going to play four cycles through this lick and then I'm going a little bit behind the beat and then I'm really going to drag. I'm going to drag to the point of like almost no return where I'm almost fa falling off the sidewalk here, but you can hear the difference between the two. So you can hear the difference. It kind of sounds like I'm slowing down, and I am, but I'm hitting the key points right where the where the metronome hits on the on the clicks. So let me just give it slow it down to that really slow lilt where I'm barely hanging on, and you can hear the exaggeration. You you might hear this, and there's some banjo players that actually do this. Uh, some of the old school guys, and and they might not even be aware that they do it, but it's what makes the sound uh, the sound of bluegrass in many ways. So this is this is one of the predominant uh, for me it's one of the defining factors of the authentic bluegrass timing it's um, it doesn't rush uh, it doesn't drag too much it kind of catches up with itself after a little bit and it's hard to explain but it's I think that's the best I can do it and uh, it's it's the feel that comes with it it's this kind of roller coaster ride of notes when you're playing the banjo you can listen to different players like Sam Bush and Tony Rice and uh, uh, Ralph Stanley and uh, 
one of my favorite timing artists is Bill Emerson, the banjo player. He's just fantastic at doing this stuff. I'm gonna take this roll down some clicks on the metronome now so you can, we can break it down and you can kind of hear uh, what I'm doing with it uh, more precisely. We can take it apart. First, here's what my right hand is doing. So this is pretty basic. Now to the metronome, I'm going to take this and I'm going to play it at a reasonable bluegrass bounce. And then I'm going to show you how I exaggerate this uh, for practice purposes. If you over exaggerate it, um, it it's a great way to practice uh, because you're, you're sort of it's sort of a caricature of what you really want to do and it kind of settles into place once you have other players around to rein you in but when you practice things like this it's really good to to exaggerate them a bit so first i'm going to do a few cycles through the roll with a normal feel for this at this slow tempo then i'm going to do it at the same tempo with an exaggerated feel Now, if you'll notice, I'm doing the slide kind of like a cartoon slide, like I'm just not going. I'm putting some feel behind it. I'm keeping it slow at the beginning. And then at the end, a nice, a nice trajectory, a nice takeoff. Um, and when I exaggerate this on this next time around through the rolls, you're going to hear that I'm really uh, emphasizing that. That, uh, that push on that slide along with the lilt that I'm doing with the timing. Here's another example of the same time and feeling with the ever famous Foggy Mountain Breakdown Roll. First did a normal feel and then did an exaggerated swing feel. And just so everybody knows, I'm sure some people play this different. I start this roll with the thumb on the second string. And it kind of helps me with my swing feel. I know a lot of people start it with the index. I start it with a thumb and a middle. And then I finish the, the sequence of forward rolls. doesn't strain my middle finger. I'm used to going up that high anyway. And so it kind of gives me the, the punctuation that I want uh, in that particular phrase where the swing is really important to get right, uh, especially when you speed it up. The Foggy Mountain Breakdown Roll can also be applied up the neck.
and in several different spots. Here's a G with your G chord. It's an octave higher. Here, where there's a G chord. And here's your G down here. So to the metronome, th this is on your third, uh, your second, first string, and your index is going, or your thumb. However, your hands are built. You can use either one, but I put my index, I bar here, and put my index on the fifth string, on the sixth interval, on the fourteenth fret of the fifth string. So here it is to the metronome in both feels, uh, a normal swing and a exaggerated swing. You can hear, kind of hear me go back and forth between these two feels. Uh, I'll make them more distinct now. This type of thing can be utilized with any chord uh, in whatever key you like, <clears throat> but I tend to practice it and tell students to practice it in all your, all the spots where a G major chord is going to be. Here's an example of how you can use these up to speed and practice them. And here is with exaggerated swing feel. <laughs> 